and some that have opted not to travel. So um, it's quite interesting who's here and what form everybody's in. Obviously, we've had such a long summer without racing, you know, very, very late road season. But for a lot of track riders, that could actually almost be a benefit to just really sort of knuckle down, um, get, get on with your training without any sort of travel and competition to interrupt that. So it depends what sort of rider you are. And it depends if you, um, you know, really thrive off those, off those races and off that traveling or if actually a really sort of good solid training block is, is what you need and what you thrive off so um quite interesting to see where everybody's at and obviously we are now actually quite a long way out from the olympics obviously the last competition we saw we were chatting about how it's just on the horizon but now it's a little bit further away so interesting to see how everyone's doing now indeed Welcome back, everybody. Um, we're about to go scratch racing. Starting at the rail, uh, we have uh, Fidanza of Italy, Thuanians Bella Sky, too, who will go well. Savichkova is here as well for the Czech Republic. Uh, Nia Evans is part of this as well. Very much looking forward to seeing how she is uh, going to go here. Uh, Hannah uh, Cesarak, as well, of Belarus, was uh, up against the rail along with uh, Klimchenko of the Ukraine. Starting at the blue band will be uh, Maria Martins of Portugal very strong rider. We have uh, Bajikova as well as uh, uh, Slovakia. Anna Seitz of Switzerland, uh, Borissa of Hungary with Klimova of the Russian Federation will go strongly as always. Spain's Calvo, uh, Tanya Calvo and uh, Greek, Greece is represented by Igo Milaki. Um, Fidanza is a youngster who has shown great strength in depth, actually, and this scratch race is not beyond her, starting amongst the favourites. But I've got to say that Nia Evans will probably be up there amongst the favourites as well, Joe. I think she will. So quick shout out. I know her pet dog Figaro is actually watching her on TV as well. <laughs> on Instagram, so I think he's excited to see her compete. Uh, but yeah, Nia Evans, uh, really exciting rider, really versatile, part of the team pursuit squad. So a real sort of strong member of that team, but also really good at the bunch races. And it's interesting to see her develop over the last few years. She's got a really good turn of speed on her. So it depends how the scratch race goes. And obviously this can be a very tactical event, but looking forward to seeing how Nia Evans can get stuck in today. Yeah, it's uh, we, we watched Nia, I think, with uh, Katie Archibald at the London Six and a few other superstars as well um, as uh, part of the women's competition there. Uh, sadly, the six-day racing series this year, of course, has been uh, uh, suspended due to COVID. But uh, looking forward to the London Six next year in 21, and hopefully we can reinvigorate all of those um, uh, fantastic six-day racing events as um, the world starts to stabilise. Right now, it's a scratch race. Um, it's pretty simple. Um, you go 40 laps. Whoever finishes fastest wins. Simple as that, Joe. Yeah, exactly. First over the line is the winner. So you can gain a lap and be a lap up on the field, or it can come to a sprint. You can have a few riders gain a lap. It can get a little bit interesting. So, yeah, it depends what tactics everyone employs. Yeah, there's no points gained. You're just, you're just a lap up. So whoever completes the distance of 10 kilometres, which is 40 laps first, um, is the winner. So hold on to your hats because it does get very very lively and women's scratch racing has been uh, enthralling we've we've had, we've seen some great results and some great events haven't we we have so maria martin's in here she's always a really exciting rider to watch uh, the rider from portugal um bronze in the world championships this year in this event bronze in the 2019 european championships um it's always interesting coming into a scratch race thinking about who else is on the start list who's a strong sprinter who's going to want to go on the attack and then making a decision on what gear you want to ride obviously in track racing we can't change our gear during the events you know once you've um picked that's it and you gotta you gotta go with it so it's always quite an interesting decision to make so of analyzing what other riders are there and how you think the race might go it's true what you say um having a, an amazing skill set you need to be good at all kinds of different things um one of the if you were to describe it in road racing terms you'd probably say punchy was what you need so the ability to take on um all comers as it were but also impose yourself when you need to as a, a sudden turn of pace is always going to be vital um, but you often need allies in this joe if you're going to make it succeed especially if you're going to gain a lap and then start uh, policing the field it helps to have somebody come along who's equally as strong as you. 
Yeah, that's another interesting point. So we have one rider per nation here, so no teammates, no one to work with in that sense that we see in road racing. But you do you do see allegiances formed. You do see riders give each other a little nod, perhaps, and say, you know, let's let's both go now. Um, equally, you get riders not willing to work together. You know, if, if you're away in a breakaway and there's someone who you know is by far a quicker sprinter than you, you know, you don't want to help them gain a lap and then know they're going to be beating you. On the other hand, for some riders, they'll be happy to ensure a place on the podium. So, yeah, a little bit, uh, qu quite quite a lot of um, tactics, a uh, little bit of sort of the psychology of it as well in there, thinking who's going to be who's going to be your ally. <laughs> well, we'll see those alliances formed um, quite often and say this quietly, Spain do it for themselves. Simple as that. They they, I, they have a knack of picking an absolutely fabulous moment to just go on the attack. And quite often, you'll see riders going uh, deep. You don't want to uh, telegraph what you're doing. And so, as a result, a lot of the attacks come from deep in the field, don't they, Joe? They roll over the top of everybody to catch them by surprise. Yeah, exactly. So you need to be able to use the height of the track um, try and take people by surprise if you can use that sort of big downhill that transition you get off the banking to really sort of gain some distance but having said that i've seen riders attack from the black line and just get out of the saddle and just power away from people so if you're if you're that strong it can be done let's see how this one uh, pans out looking at this track is absolutely immaculate as you expect a new facility it's been ridden in and it does take a while for tracks to settle it's a uh, siberian uh, was it siberian larch did i see or siberian spruce i'm not quite sure i think it's spruce there you go uh, we had a look at the uh, track data a little bit earlier on and it looks Im immaculate very little scarring on it joe which you always get after uh, uh, years of competition Yes, you do. So you see all sorts of patches that um, will have to get fixed um, if you've got crashes either in training or competition. And often you get um, people out during a competition to, to make small repairs to the track if there's a big crash during a competition, which is always interesting to see them get to work quickly. But yeah, it looks like a lovely new facility. And, and like you say, um, you know, a track is like a little bit of time to wear in and every track is so different. So a lot of people always say this to me, like, come on, how different can it be? You know, it's 250 meters, it's an oval shape, it's wood, but every track rides differently. And whenever you go to a new velodrome, it does take a little bit of getting used to the transitions are sometimes steeper, the, the bankings, are, um, the, 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 the bends are tighter, so you can get longer straights and tighter bankings, or you can get more of a sort of circular shape. And um, it all takes a little bit of getting used to. Essentially, you know, it is just a track and you know you can't almost get too technical about it sometimes i think it makes more of a difference in events like team pursuit where you can really nail those changes um a little bit less of a difference in a bunch event like this yeah uh, it, it's strange as well some of the drop-off angles from the from the banking really do vary russia famous i think st petersburg for a, 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 an incredibly steep raked track um so the geometry of it and also the rolling resistance as joe was talking about uh, what they've actually coated it with sometimes no coating at all um how it's uh, how it's basically been sanded um, and also how new or old the wood is often a new track takes uh, gets quicker as it starts to bed in you'll find uh, two three years later uh, when the track's still operable that uh, it gets to its peak and then starts to go off as the track starts to degrade and has to be relayed uh, they hold off as long as possible to relay a track uh, because the character has been learned by the local riders essentially so they don't want to lose that um, that knowledge as it were which will go as soon as you have to relay the surface so yeah, it's, uh, but it is fascinating. 27 laps to go. We're up uh, almost to what has been an incredibly cagey race so far. Um, this will be where the pace starts to change. We might go a few probing runs. Now, um, uh, this is uh, Fidanza, heads up the track and holds it uh, for quite a while. Now, she's having a look at seeing who's lively. It's a, it's a good thing to have um, a measure on your opponents, naturally enough. And here we go. It had to come, and it was, uh, it was bound to. And it's uh, Karashev. Who, who goes with uh, Nia Evans uh, alive to the threat as well. They're all driving into this one. 25 laps to go and the first probing runs. Well, you felt like it was coming, Joe. Yes, you did. It was going to have to come at some point. And it is always a case of fair. Who is going to make that first attack? Because, of course, we all say, you know, you want to, you want to be countering an attack. But, um, yeah, th that Polish rider there did make the first move. We're now seeing Fidanza from Italy on the front, just looking over her shoulder. No one has made a counterattack as yet. Well, Fidanza, a quality rider, and she goes up. Uh, she was the one that looked most cagey. And I think when she went, came off the front, she's one of the riders that is regarded as a big threat here. That's where the attack came from uh, Karasevich. She 
went, knowing that Fidanza was just looping to the back. And then a bit of hurry up, not least from uh, Nia Evans, closed that down. 22 laps to go, so we're nearing the halfway marker. And this is where we are going to see, I think, a sudden change of pace from somebody. Uh, there'll be a skittle, but who's going to go for it? Fidanza now at the front. She's going to try this herself, changes the cadence, has a check, sees who's there. KG stuff and uh, she now heads back up. She's not going to make the same mistake again. Let's see how quickly she goes to the back of the string. Uh, not that keen on doing so. Spain checks over the shoulder as well. Doesn't want to be, be losing out Calvo here. But Calvo more likely to be a rider that uh, electrifies this than other ways. Uh, the Ukraine also looking busy with uh, Jim Kl Klimchenko goes up to the top. A little bit of a change of pace from Hungary and uh, indeed the that's from Borissa and Switzerland also took in and looking uh, looking uh, smooth for the time being. Haven't seen much of Greece. They've short changed, come out of the middle of the pack. You're seeing that. Come out of the middle of the pack and drop to the back again. So don't take too much wind and ring the changes in front of you. Uh, a cheeky tactic uh, about saving energy, Joe. Yeah, yeah, you want to stay, you know, in, in the position you want to be in, but you don't want to keep hitting the front and keep doing these turns. We're seeing Nia Evans there, a few pedal revs on the front just to keep it going, and just swinging up as we approach we that go. banking. And now we've got another move. Yeah, big pickup, Czech Republic going for it, uh, Sevichkova, who uh, pushes on. Now, this is a catch me if you can. Somebody's going to have to go for it, and po Portugal do exactly that. Maria Martins is on the case, and this is a strong pairing that we've got right now. Uh, Martins is hard to catch. Nia Evans will be setting off, so will be Fidanza after her. You'll see that in a few moments' time. So we're just tracing our lead athlete, and the camera pulls, and there we are. Well, it was an open door that had to be stepped through, and a few decided to take the option, but they don't want to do all the work. They don't trust this as a move that's going to stick at the moment, and uh, Nia Evans just cleverly goes to the top of the track, invites a few others to come through, and uh, in so doing, uh, Fidanza rolls through into the gap, and it's killed off ultimately by uh, Karasevich, the pole once again, but Fidanza's alive to all of of this Poland and Italy being very busy so far and finally Greece kind of suspect that they know which move is uh, or from where the move is going to come again if you ride the top of the track you open up the bottom and somebody can jink down and start to get a bit of pace and there you go you see it and that was a cheeky door slam shut from Martina Vitanza, uh, Fidanza she knew that uh, Maria Martins one of the favorites here was just going to roll to the front and to save some effort she just blocked the door she did that, um, yeah, very, a little, maybe a little tiny bit cheekily, but done very well there by Fidanza. So Maria Martins, like you said, was just coming underneath. Um, didn't, that move didn't come to anything. It was interesting, Nia Evans put in, a, put in quite a bit of work there to bring that break back, but she didn't do all the work herself. She put in a big effort to sort of really sort of get the bunch of chase, then she pulled that out of the way and let everyone else finish it off. Well, this is Hannah Tescara, I think, of Belarus that uh, has decided that it, she's going to go for it. And it's a, it's ha it's a, a temptation, I think, for uh, the Ukraine that's just too much to ignore. And uh, this might well be a strong pairing. Don't forget, there's only 12 laps to go. Um, some of these riders will be unknown to each other. We, we do occasionally get surprises in the Europeans, I might add. And it's uh, partially due to uh, a lack of knowledge about your opponents, particularly on a scratch race, Joe. Yeah, exactly. Knowledge about your opponents is absolutely crucial. You know, you need to know who's got the ability to, to make those long attacks hold and who actually is, you know, you don't have to worry about who are the really fast sprinters who do not want to take to the line with you. So doing your homework is absolutely key in an event like this. <laughs> And, uh, well, knowing about Martina Fidanza's uh, qualities as well is an easy thing, but uh, not so when you're, when you're talking about Hannah uh, Saraka. And she has gone off like a firecracker, I think you might say. Um, and uh, at the moment, they're not giving her terribly much respect. Now, it would be amazing if she's got still something left in the locker here because they don't believe it for now and she's got what over half a lap of an advantage joe that's a handsome margin camera pans up waiting to see who's there and for the time being the pack are just getting cagey but they could all lose out if they don't give um the rider from belarus enough respect 
Oh, definitely. You, know, you need to respect this lead. This is a huge lead now. We're just coming through with eight laps to go. So the lap will, will, should be saying um, seven now for the lead. It will say eight for the bunch as they come round. She has got an absolutely huge gap and she looks, she, you can tell she's tiring a little bit there by her face, but you know, she can maybe even just about see the tail ends of the bunch at points here. So they need to, they need to get chasing because yeah, she is more than half a lap up now. Well, uh, they're running out of time to do so, I'm afraid. And uh, uh, we remind you that this is the final. There's a European Championship jersey up for grabs and a gold medal, bunch of flowers, you name it. She'll be taking it. And what a way to open an account. This is the first title that we will decide here. And if it gets to three laps, I think she's going to make it home. This is remarkable, and they still won't do it. Is this a case of uh, um, opponents staring each other into the abyss? Oh, she's starting to slow now, uh, Soraka. And no surprise, she's been in the wind for quite some time. Let's see what the gap is when uh, it clicks down to three. They still haven't made their move. That's either a lot of belief or indeed a big mistake, Joe. <sighs> Yeah, possibly a big mistake here. I mean, look, look yeah. at this gap here. It's not a long way, but you know, she can see the back of that bunch just four laps to go. Uh, well, three laps to go now for our leader huh. under a kilometer off. of racing. Huh. They've gone, but it's all too late. Uh, Fidanza goes for it, picks it up. Big, big move by her. She's got to believe. Uh, uh, not alone either. Belarus, um, uh, it's still out there and going for this, but the Russian Federation with Klimova is on her case. Well, Belarus might well hold on here. Two laps remaining. Let's see how quickly they close, and everyone's lit up. But right now, Belarus, everyone's surely cheering for this. She's going to come round and have the bell ringing in her ears, and then all of a sudden, we've got one lap to go. Fidanza comes up and over the top. This is a brilliant work and the Ukraine also getting involved. Final lap. Can she make it? Is it all too late for the chase? Camera not really helping us at the moment. Final lap. Can Belarus get home? I think Fidanza is going to have her in the final corner here but uh, it may well be a silver medal. Fidanza is coming up and over the top. Oh, heartbreak I think for the Belarusian but a silver medal and great credit to her. Well, that was gutsy. I think it may well have even been Nia Evans that came across the line there for the bronze medal. We will see in a moment's time. Maria Fidanza started off as favorite and she nearly got that wrong. Belarus is Hannah Saraka. What a cracker. That was amazing. That was three laps to go. I thought Fidanza's left this way too late and this title is going to Belarus. But what a final two laps there by the Italian rider. She timed that absolutely perfectly came round uh, her opponent here uh, coming out of turn four to take that win and what a spectacular finale that was and brilliant win there for Fidanza. Well, we told you scratch racing is absolutely fantastic. <laughs> There's a purity about it. Uh, there are tactics. I hope we've illuminated a few for you, but um, I thought Martina Fernanda has actually blown that. Hannah Soraka gets the best silver medal you're likely to see. That was absolutely fantastic. I think it was near, near Evans with the bronze we wait for confirmation. Wonderful. Well, what about our first title decider, Joe? I loved that. Yes, I loved that too. Um, it was quite cagey for the first half of the race, and it was a lot of waiting for who's going to make that first move. But honestly, it's three or four laps ago, I thought, you know, this is a foregone conclusion. She had three quarters of a lap, and it's actually agonizing at the end because I would have loved her to have won. <laughs> but, but what a spectacular finale. So, yeah, fair play to the Italian runner, um, Martina Fidanza, for timing that to absolute perfection and getting herself a European title. Well, what a what a great way to uh, open your account, I guess. But uh, Fidanza, I I think she even she was a bit scared. The Evans got fourth actually. Uh, Klimchenko of the Ukraine held on for the bronze, so no medal for Nia Evans. Um, but I think the entire field will be thinking, goodness me, how do we let that one go? Um, options on another medal um, out of the window, courtesy of the fact that. Soraka did an amazing job. She's going to get a big cheer from us when she collects that silver medal. All credit, though, to Martina.